Mathematicians have finally discovered an aperiodic monotile. Old news! Without reflections. Let me catch you up. Tiles. Shapes that fit together with no gaps or overlaps. Humans are obsessed and have been for thousands of years. There are two types that you need to know about. Periodic, where the same thing happens over and over again. I can pick it up, I can move it over, it looks exactly the same. That's called translational symmetry, and if it has that, it's periodic. They seem to be quite common. Then, there are clever ways of fitting shapes together like this, so that when you go to pick it up and move it around, dun dun dun, it doesn't ever find a new place to fit. No translational symmetry. This is an example of a non-periodic tiling. But you could use this shape in the normal way too, so it can tile periodically. It can do both. So for half a century, mathematicians have been trying to find a single shape which can only tile aperiodically. And on the 21st of March, 2020, David Smith and friends deliver the hat. Ah, we've done it! An aperiodic monotile! A single shape that can tile infinitely without any repetition! The crowd goes wild! Except they hate it because some of the hats have to be backwards. So does that actually count as a single tile? I'm perfectly comfortable to say, yeah, we, we have an aperiodic monotile. Which is not to say that the question of whether one exists that does not require reflection, is not to say that that's not an important and deep question. Like, yeah, let's study that next and try to come up with a non-reflective aperiodic monotile. I, I sort of, I was telling my co-authors, like we should, we, should, we should maybe call that a vampire tile because it's a tile that covers the plane with no reflection. Oh. They in fact did not call it the vampire tile. And now, a mere 10 weeks later, on the 30th of May, 2023, the moment you've all been waiting for, an aperiodic monotile without reflections. Let's look at the anatomy of the hat. It's a 14-sided shape, which consists of only two different length edges. They can either be one or square root. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so that slightly longer length, that is two edges together with a 180 degree angle between them. But the wonderful thing is, when this was discovered, it unlocked a whole continuum of shapes which have this aperiodic monotile property. So like, you can make one of the lengths longer and the other lengths shorter, and it still works. At the far end of the spectrum, if you squish these marked lengths down to zero, you get a shape chevron and it tiles periodically Boom. and at the other extreme end you have a comet where the other lengths have been squished down to zero again periodic tiling at the midpoint you have a shape where all of the lengths are one and again <laughs> it doesn't work it creates a periodic tiling but every single shape in between these will be aperiodic so we have the hat and then the opposite of the hat which is called the turtle so start middle and end are periodic but everything in between has this magical aperiodic property. Then maths artist and tiling enthusiast Yoshiaki Arakai was like, wait, let's make a combo turtles and hats and hats and turtles both of which create aperiodic tilings but with two different tiles remember the aim of the game here is to get one tile hang on though if we crank that dial to the middle the hats become turtles the turtles become hats it all becomes one and the shape doesn't need to be reflected add some squiggly edges to stop it from ever tiling periodically and the specter was born the one true aperiodic monotile but yes, of course, as we're getting used to now, this does open up infinitely many related aperiodic monotiles. One of the main reasons that this discovery has come around so quickly after the last one is the fantastic job David Smith, Joseph Myers, Craig Kaplan and Heim Goodman Strauss did of communicating their work and creating a space for people to play with it. Along with the very serious but incredibly readable paper that they put out, they also put out a bunch of interactive resources so people could like explore, build their own tiles, print their own. This into Arakai's work, which they saw, took it on board, and now here we are with a real, hands down, no objections, aperiodic monotile. I've always wondered if people during different points in history were aware of the time that they were in, you know, for like different golden ages or revolutions, things like that. 
but definitely for this one I feel like the internet has led to a real golden age of maths collaboration unlike ever before. We are having a moment. It's an honour to witness and I can't believe I got to see it in my lifetime and I'm just so proud that these current maths champions are inviting people to get involved and really listening to the, the contributions that regular maths hobbyists have to make. Maths! Ah! <laughs>